All right, so CSF, cerebral spinal fluid, is a fluid that essentially like bathes the entire central nervous system. And it has a couple of functions. Cerebral spinal fluid is going to provide nutrients to uh, the nervous tissue. And because the CNS is essentially floating in CSF, it helps reduce the effective weight of the brain. So the brain is actually quite heavy, but because it's pretty much floating in CSF, that buoyancy helps reduce the effective weight so that it's not super heavy. And then that fluid, that, that CSF that bathes the um, central nervous system also helps absorb shock. So I have this sagittal head right here to show you that. So here's our cerebrum, here's the brain. See this blue space that surrounds it? This is the subarachnoid space, which is filled with CSF fluid, right? So the meninges, let me talk about meninges real fast. Um, there are three meninges. Meninges are coverings, protective coverings of the brain and, and spinal cord. We find the same three meninges around the, spinal, the brain and spinal cord. So here, this is the bones of the, these are the bones of the cranium, right? Directly attached to the inside of the cranium is a dense white fibrous connective tissue called the dura mater. Dura, because it's super durable, it's a very tough fibrous sac, okay? Then immediately attached below, deep to the dura mater, would be the arachnoid mater. Now, it's hard to, I didn't realize, it's hard to see arachnoid mater on any of our models, but you should know that there's dura mater, would be the most superficial, then arachnoid mater, which would be attached directly below the dura mater, and then we have a subarachnoid space, which is this blue space right here, which is filled with CSF, okay? And then the next meninge is called the pia mater. And the pia mater, pia means delicate, pia mater directly attaches to the, the tissue itself, right? So it's directly ad adhered to the brain and spinal cord. So those are the meninges, those are protective coverings of the brain. All right, so let's talk about the, uh, go back to the CSF. I just wanted to point out the subarachnoid space where CSF will flow. Um, all right, so what produces CSF? The primary areas that produce the CSF are gonna be the ventricles of the brain. Ventricles meaning cavities within the brain itself. This model shows the ventricles. Imagine this like superimposing inside like that. Does everyone see? That's how it would fit in the brain, yeah? Like if I could fit this inside, that's how it would be oriented. So that's why I have it like this, okay? All right. So this would be anterior and this would be posterior. There are four ventricles. See these big, huge ones? There's one in each hemisphere. These are collectively called the lateral ventricles, but they, you can also call them the first and second. I just call them collectively the lateral ventricles. So these are the largest, you can see right away that these are the largest of all the ventricles. So they're gonna produce the most CSF, right? Now in the ventricles, I'm gonna, can, in your videos, can you see that pink tissue on the underside, that pink stuff? So I'm gonna pass it around. You see all that pink stuff? Okay, that pink stuff represents choroid plexus. Choroid plexus is a specialized tuft of capillaries and ependymal cells, which are another type of uh, neuroglial cells. The, those, the choroid plexus produces the CSF. So that's why you find choroid plexus in all the ventricles. All right, so these are the lateral ventricles, okay? And then, so in the videos, make sure y'all can see this right here would be the third ventricle. So CSF flows from the lateral ventricles through what's called an interventricular foramen into the third ventricle. Then does everyone see this little tail that comes off the back of the third ventricle? This is the cerebral aqueduct. And then this back here would be the fourth ventricle. So from this point of view, lateral ventricles, interventricular foramen, third ventricle, 
cerebral aqueduct, fourth ventricle, right? All right, so I'm gonna show you now in a sagittal section what the, those areas correspond to, okay? So here, remember I talked about this area that's right below the corpus callosum? This is a portion of the lateral ventricle. So from the lateral ventricle, CSF will flow into the third ventricle. Everyone remembers this guy, the thalamus? Right above the thalamus, this is part of the third ventricle. It's labeled number 28. See this pink tissue right here? That represents choroid plexus, and that would be choroid plexus of the third ventricle. From the third ventricle, so let me go through the flow again. The CSF will go from the lateral ventricles through an interventricular foramen, which is just a hole, remember foramen is hole, into the third ventricle, from the third ventricle into the cerebral aqueduct. So this little line right here, which is gonna be between, so y'all see, here's the corpora quadrigemina, here are the cerebral peduncles, See that line right here? That's the cerebral aqueduct. And then this area right here between the cerebellum and the brainstem, this is the fourth ventricle. So the flow of CSF again is from lateral ventricles through an interventricular foramen, which is a hole, you can't see it here, through the third ventricle, through the cerebral aqueduct into the fourth ventricle. From the fourth ventricle, the CSF is going to either go through the central canal of the spinal cord, or it will exit through medial and lateral holes to go into the subarachnoid space. And the subarachnoid space surrounds the entire CNS so that essentially the brain and spinal cord is somewhat floating in the, the CSF fluid. This model, again, these are the lateral, these big guys, these are the lateral ventricles, interventricular foramen, third ventricle, cerebral aqueduct, fourth ventricle. So the cerebellum would be right here. Just like we see, here's the fourth ventricle, here's the cerebellum, all right? So that's the flow of CSF through the ventricles into the subarachnoid space.